Hello fellow YouTubers, I'm Cassandra Joy and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, you may not realize that you've stepped into a world of someone who is rather obsessed with high-end handbags. I never thought I'd be that girl. Growing up, I was never interested in name brand things. If it looked cute to me, I was happy with it, whether it was $100 or $10. In fact, I would probably go for the $10 one because that was what I could afford. Well, I still can't afford to pay $100 for a single item. But I have found some really cool ways to thrift high quality, high end handbags for very little cost. And I thought along with those tips that I've learned, I would share my high end handbag collection as well. And when I say handbag haul, I mean handbag haul. <laughs> So these tips I'm going to give you work whether you are a fan of Coach, Michael Kors, Betsy Johnson, Kate Spade, Vera Bradley, Tommy Hilfinger, or you don't even care what brand it is as long as it looks pretty, which is also very valid and I do shop that way sometimes. <laughs> Actually, that's kind of my whole shopping philosophy. Ooh, pretty must have. <laughs> Full disclosure, 90% of these bags are thrifted from ThreadUp. If you don't know, I am a ThreadUp ambassador. I don't feel like I need to validate anything because you guys are so lovely and supportive of anything I love and support, but I do want to give a disclosure that I earn and get nothing out of talking about ThreadUp on YouTube. I just really love them. I loved them long before I was an ambassador and will love them long after they realize why did we give her an ambassadorship to this again? <laughs> the handbags that are not from ThreadUp were thrifted at Goodwill. So I can't really link any of these, except that I do have a discount code in the description box that I always link in every video that will give you $10 off your very first order. And the cool thing about shopping at ThreadUp specifically is that they have a point system. So the more you purchase, the more points you earn, and you can use those points for in-store cash, whether it's free shipping or five to $10 off a future order. There you go, that little thrifting secret should make up for the fact that I can't really link any of these. But let's start with the bags I thrifted from ThreadUp. So one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about ThreadUp is that they don't just sell clothes. They actually sell accessories. They have hats, scarves, shoes sometimes, but most importantly, handbags. They have everything you could think of from Michael Kors, Coach, Betsy Johnson, Kate Spade, Tommy Hilfinger, all of the main big names that you know of, and a few that I've never heard of but I'm very glad I know now. I always love a good coach bag. I don't know why, it just feels very classic to me. It felt like a status symbol. If you had a coach bag, you either had money, you had parents who had money, or you had a very generous grandma. <laughs> I had none of those things. I had very lovely parents and very lovely grandparents, but none of the three of us ever had a lot of money to go around, so I didn't grow up with high-end handbags. I grew up with very nice stuff, you know, but it wasn't high-end, which is probably part of the reason why I got into thrifting in the first place, but I digress. Let's start with Coach. This bag is so pretty. I loved the snakeskin texture of it. I thought it would go well with anything. I thought it was a pretty decent size, on the smaller size for sure, but perfect for those little outings where you don't need to carry a lot. It does have the Coach name stamped into the metal right here, and it does have the Coach tag, where is it, right here, showing that it is in fact a legitimate coach bag. Let me pull up my ThreadUp app to tell you how much it costs. This bag was originally $138. You will never see me spend anything close to that amount of money on a handbag, on a single item, ever. Unless it's a piece of furniture, or maybe a car payment. <laughs> Beyond that, that is far too rich for my blood. But through ThreadUp, I was able to get it for $34.99. I know, I'm so happy that I was able to get it for that price. I just think it's so cute and very timeless. This is one of those pieces that I imagine girls that only wear New York fashion would put on. It makes me feel like I just left a Prada runway show. <laughs> Next up is this Ralph Lauren 100% leather handbag. This is the one I've used the most. It's just such a great size. Look at that. Look at all that room. It's just one of those, again, timeless classic pieces that go with everything that you can grow up with. Your style can change, your taste can change, but this bag is forever. I never was a big Ralph Lauren fan. I think mostly because I just didn't know enough about it. Then I saw a lot of Ralph Lauren bags pop up on ThreadUp and I'm like, ooh, I think I'm missing out on something here. Let me check this out. And this is actually the bag out of all of these that I've used the most. This bag was originally $148, but through ThreadUp, I was able to get it for $47.99. I try to keep my handbag purchases 
under $50. If it's above $50, I'm not usually going to lean toward it unless I'm just head over heels in love with it. I'm so glad I got this one because it honestly just goes with everything and it goes with every season and I just know I'm going to keep this in my collection for a very, very long time. I think I just bought this a little too long ago. The app isn't letting me show what the original price was, so I'm going to browse through here and see if I can find something of a similar size and sort of base the total off of that. So a lot of the bags that I'm seeing that are roughly around this size range anywhere from $150 to $300. Really wish I knew how much it was originally. Well, I'm very sorry. I don't know the original price, but I can tell you that I got it through ThreadUp for $45.99. This was an absolute steal. I actually didn't know about Michael Kors until my friend Donna from my old job told me about her obsession with Michael Kors. My friend Rachel loves Coach. My friend Donna loves Michael Kors. So whenever we go to the outlet mall, we have to make a pit stop at both. And I quickly understood both of their obsessions. <laughs> so this one, I really love the clasp. The mechanism to close it is so cool. Just listen. Click. And then you squeeze this to open it again. How cool is that? This is the purse I've actually been using today for Easter because it was pink and it had this quilted pattern and it looked very springy and I also forgot that I actually bought a purse specifically to go with this Easter outfit. Did I use it? No, I did not. But let me show you what that purse was because it was also the fed up. The purse I was meant to wear this Easter was this one. Now, I don't know if this is considered high-end, but again, it falls under the, ooh, pretty must-have. This was so gorgeous. Look at that detail. I'm just going to give you a nice little close-up of the threading. It's gorgeous. I mean, it's very thin. I'm not sure I could fit more than my phone in here, but honestly... I didn't care. I was not thinking about practicality when I bought this. I was thinking about, it's so pretty, I have to have it. <laughs> so it's here, it's mine, and I will keep it forever until I someday have a daughter who will inevitably steal it. This was originally $60, so far less than the average purse, but I think it's because of the size, the brand, which is Grace and Lace. Never heard of it before, but I do think I wanna check it out now that I know they make such beautiful pieces like this. But through ThreadUp, I got it for $25.99. Definitely worth every penny. I absolutely love it. This is gonna be so pretty for spring and summer. I'm gonna have to keep it out so that I remember I have it. Don't forget next time. The next bag I have to show you is actually not quite a handbag, but I still felt it sort of belonged in this haul. It's a backpack, a black leather backpack. It has almost canvas material here on the inside. I was looking for a backpack that would replace one that I've had since college <laughs> for a very long time. And so of course I jumped onto ThreadUp to see what I could find. This backpack is by Zara. I think that's a European brand. I don't know much about Zara, but I do know it's very popular. People seem to really like it. All of my favorite European UK resident YouTubers seem to really like Zara as well. I'm not sure if it's kind of like our target, but it was leather and it was black and it would go with a lot, so I thought I would pick it up. Originally, this backpack was $139. Woo, that's a lot of money. If any of you are from the UK, is that how much you pay? Too rich for my blood. Woo. But through ThreadUp, I got it for $72.99. I will say, though, I didn't spend $72.99 because when you become a ThreadUp ambassador at the beginning of every month, they give you $50 deposited into your store account. So I decided to spend the $50 on this, which meant I only spent around $20 instead, which I think is a very good deal for such a nice quality backpack. So that's it for the ThreadUp portion of this haul, but I did want to give you a tip that I've learned while shopping at ThreadUp. Thrift tip number one. Not only does ThreadUp have reduced prices on all of their items, but they also have frequent sales, so take advantage of those whenever you can. They do have sales, seems to be about once a month. So if you've already used the discount code in my description, if you've already used up all of your earned points and you still want a little bit of a discount on your purchase, I would wait for those sales. They always announce it on their Instagram. If you're not following them, that would probably be a good way to stay in the know. I usually try to post their sales on my Instagram stories as well. Just in case anyone's interested, I know some of you have been converted to ThreadUp through my videos, which makes me so unbelievably happy. So I like to try to keep everybody 
informed if I can. Another option is becoming a Thread Up ambassador yourself. It's not hard at all. You just have to have a decent social media following. I was able to do it with only 700 some followers on my Instagram. I did offer up my other social media channels, but I don't know if that played a part at all since I'm not required to post anything on my other socials, just on Instagram. If you know my friend Ali Lee, she links the ambassador program link often in her videos. So if you wanna slide over there to her videos, they're great to watch anyway, but she does have that link if you're interested in going that route. I'm gonna save the Goodwill portion of the haul for last. First, we're gonna do the oddballs out. <laughs> These three handbags were all acquired in different ways. This coach handbag, so pretty, right? I love that shock of blue, and I love the size. It's just a good, bare minimum, don't wanna carry a lot with you kind of handbag. It is a crossbody, which is my favorite. I really don't buy anything other than crossbodies anymore, but there is the occasional event where I'm like, I want to be a little fancier. I want to be a little more inconvenient and wear something on my elbow instead. This purse was actually gifted to me by my friend Rachel, the one who loves Coach so much. She had a few extra bags that she didn't want anymore and she offered me this one. It does have the Coach tag here. It does have the Coach button here. So it is legit and it's in great condition. She really takes care of her stuff. I think this will be great for the summer months because blue is just one of those makes me think of summer and beach vacations and being out and about in the sunshine. This was actually the very first coach bag I ever owned. And it was secondhand, which is just so apropos to what I do. I have told her if she doesn't want any of her other handbags to let me know ASAP, because I will always help a friend declutter their treasures because I'm selfless like that. Very first coach bag I ever had, and I think it's really sweet. I will not get rid of this anytime soon. This bag is so treasured to me. This is the very first high-end handbag I ever bought myself. It's a Betsy Johnson handbag. It has all of these beautiful light catching gems on it to make up a cherry design. It even has a little keychain bit here that clatters and reminds me of, only 90s kids will understand this, but they used to make hair ties that had these bobbles on either end and you would take them and wrap them in and out of each other to secure your hair. They made a very specific sound and this is that sound. <laughs> the ones who get it will get it. The others of you that are very clueless as to what I'm talking about, I'm sorry. Apparently I'm showing my age. I should look in my handbags more often. I found a mask, a phone prop, and a hair clip. Look at that shock of pink. I love it. Okay, so the thing about Betsy Johnson is that she has some wild colors and wild designs in her handbags. Some of which I like, some of which are a little too far out for me. I can appreciate them from an aesthetic perspective, but not so much from a I want to put it in my closet kind of perspective. This was just tame enough that I felt like I could add it to my collection. The black and white stripes were a big draw and the fact that I could turn it around and hide the wild if I wanted to was a nice lure as well. I want to say this cost me anywhere from around $30 to $50. I wouldn't have spent any more than $50. I know that. I purchased this at TJ Maxx. I think in the UK you guys have something called TK Maxx. Apparently it's the same thing. Our TJ Maxx sells high-end stuff at a way discounted price. Not as discounted as Goodwill or a thrift store, but still discounted. And they have really cute stuff. They have an entire section dedicated to handbags, which you can understand is very dangerous for me to go into a TJ Maxx armed with a wallet that has money in it. <laughs> I'm always armed with a wallet. Whether or not it has money in it is a different subject. But that day I was armed with both a wallet and with money and I purchased my very first handbag and it was a Betsy Johnson handbag. So I will always treasure this, always have a special place in my heart and I don't see myself getting rid of it. If I do, I'm keeping this bit. <laughs> Putting it on my keys or something. This coach bag is not a crossbody. I would have loved it to have been, but alas, the choice was slim. So my friend Amanda, who has her own YouTube channel called This Fantastic Life, her entire neighborhood does this massive garage sale. If I 
can go this year, I want to go. I found so many treasures last time, including this handbag. This was before I really delved into ThreadUp. This was before being an ambassador and having high-end handbags at my fingertips. So when I saw it, I was like, <gasps> and I found so many beautiful, really well-kept pieces. She, whoever she was, treated her bags well. So I grabbed this for $25 dollars at a garage sale. I know. It's in nearly perfect condition. I was very pleased with that purchase. That was probably one of my favorite purchases of that garage sale. Okay, that's the oddball out portion done. Now on to the goodwill portion. Thrift tip number two. Locate some high income neighborhoods near you and try to go thrift shopping there. You'll find far better quality items for the same reduced prices that you're used to. Win-win. My second tip for when you're out and about trying to find high-end handbags for a really decent, affordable price. Going to places like TJ Maxx, yes, they are discounted, but they're discounted at a price that's still unaffordable to a lot of people, including myself. So I like to go to places like Plato's Closet or Clothes Mentor or even Goodwill, and it depends on the Goodwill. If there is a richer neighborhood, I don't want to categorize neighborhoods like that, but let's be real. Rich neighborhoods will have the best stuff at their secondhand stores. So if you have a place that isn't too far away to drive, go to those places because they always have really nice stuff like couch. When I went thrifting with my friend Allie, we went to a higher income neighborhood and we found some good stuff. So that's always something to keep in mind. I think that's something we don't think about. A lot of people, when they're first starting out thrifting, they go to where it's convenient for them. It's not a lot of gas money. It's next to their neighborhood. Totally valid reasons to go there. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. But if you're wanting to get a little more serious about your thrifting and you're wanting to resell or even collect some really high-end pieces for yourself, I would suggest, especially if your secondhand stores don't carry a lot of that stuff, go to the higher income neighborhoods around you. That's your best bet for finding some really nice stuff. This is probably the biggest bag I own. Ta -da! It barely fits in frame. This is a Tommy Hilfinger. I did find this at Goodwill. I can't remember for how much, but I'm pretty sure Goodwill sells handbags for somewhere around $5. And I remember seeing this and being like, no one snatched it up. Must get there before anybody else notices that this is still there. Grabbed it and put it in my cart immediately. And it's so massive look at all the room this I would love to turn into a crossbody the straps as you can see have seen better days I would really love to figure out a way to replace the straps and be able to have it as a crossbody because it's the only way I'm gonna wear it which is why I haven't gotten rid of it because even though I don't wear it right now as it is I still want to figure out a way where I can utilize it for my needs. And the color is so pretty, right? I love that. It's very spring, summer, probably more summer, and I definitely want to utilize that this year. That was a really nice Goodwill purchase. I'm very proud of that. Next Goodwill purchase is this Vera Bradley crossbody. I am not a huge Vera Bradley fan, not because I don't think her things are beautiful, but because the patterns are just so hard to coordinate with unless you only wear neutrals and no patterns at all. There's only so many patterns I can clash before I start getting car sick looking at it. I tend to stay away from Vera Bradley, but I do think some of her stuff is really nice. Apparently she has a whole Harry Potter line that I really would like to get my little my little mitts on. They have a backpack, they have coin purses, they have crossbodies, and they all look so cute. But anyway, I digress. This was a Goodwill purchase and I was really drawn to it because of the colors. The really rich mustard gold, the burnt reddish orange here, and the dark purple. I am not a purple fan at all. You will not see a thing in my closet that is purple. I don't know why, I just don't, it's just not, I don't know. It's just not my favorite color. But I really like this plum color mixed with everything else. Thought it was really pretty, and every so often it's nice to have a cloth handbag. So I picked that up for $5.99, and I'm kind of setting it aside for the fall time, but definitely excited to give this a whirl when that time comes. And then last, but certainly not least, to finish out this entire humongous handbag haul, is a coach bag. I thrifted this from Goodwill for $5.99. Oh, nope, I lie. 
It was $9.99, still have the tag on, good thing. <laughs> I again would love to turn this into a crossbody somehow, but so far I just like it as it is. I think there's so much room. This is my, my perfect sized handbag, carrying my vlogging camera, a water bottle, a snack or two, my phone, all those things that I require whenever I go out and about. I find really hard to fit everything in if it's much smaller than this. So when I saw this, I had to have it. It has the coach tag right here. It has the coach emblem right here in the leather. And I think it's really sweet. I love that it's black. And I knew it would be an instant staple in my closet. So I definitely picked that up when I saw it. Thrift tip number three. When you're shopping at Goodwill, ask a worker there on what days they restock the shelves so you know which day is best to go for prime thrifting. Each Goodwill has a different restocking schedule to each other, so always be sure to ask. Tip number three, when you're shopping at Goodwill specifically, go up to the cashier or the manager or whoever and ask them when they restock their inventory. So with my Goodwill, they restock every single day. I know with my friend Allie's Goodwill, they restock every Sunday or Monday. I didn't realize it was different for each Goodwill. So whenever you go into a Goodwill, make sure to ask when they restock and go on that day and go as early as you can because I've made the mistake of going on a restock day and going later in the day and it's an absolute zoo. You can tell the reselling thrifters from the casual lurkers <laughs> because there is just a look of absolute determination in their eyes. They are there on a mission and they are there to complete their mission. Look out if you get in their way. <laughs> Basically, just do a little research, do a little recon. When I follow that method specifically with Goodwill, I've never not found something really good and that's really helped up my thrifting game whether you're trying to resell or just collecting things for your own home that's really helped me level up my thrifting to the next tier so hopefully that gives you kind of a starting point with your thrifting especially if you're looking for high-end handbags that's how I've been able to collect all of these things and I mean you can see how beautiful they are and how affordable they were so something's clearly working <laughs> anyway that's it for this thrifted high-end handbag haul I hope you enjoyed I'm a little nosy I'm not gonna lie I like snooping in people's closets th through video of course <laughs> that really made me sound a little suspect through videos <laughs> through hauls I really should have prefaced that I love a good haul I love seeing what people collect and what they love and especially love seeing how they were able to snag it at a great price so hopefully you enjoyed this video as well if there's another thrifted category you'd like me to single out and share with you please let me know in the comments down below if you would like to shop some of my coolest finds I do have an Instagram account called Sable Rose shop and that's where I sell everything I keep things at a really good price range just enough to support my thrifting habit but absolutely low enough to where you and anyone really can afford it. On most Sundays, I like to go thrifting and take you with me in stories on that account and do something called a quick claims game where I go thrifting, I take pictures of what I find, I set the price, and you can decide then and there if you want it. And if no one claims it, it goes back on the shelf for someone else to enjoy and the opportunity is lost. And that's why it's called a quick claim because you have to be really quick with the claim. I only stay for a few hours each visit and I'm trying to establish a week where people come to expect that that's what I do on Sundays. I have links to all my other socials, including my shop, in the description box down below, so be sure to check that out. Leave a comment if you made it to the end, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss a future video from me. I upload on Wednesdays and Saturdays, both at 6 a.m., and I would love to have you as part of this little online family. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Mwah. Bye!